Good day, fellow geeks. On this week's episode of Geeks of Azeroth, you're probably tired of hearing it by now, but once again, we were right, and we're going to tell you why in just a moment. By Geeks. About Geeks. For Geeks. Welcome to Geeks of Azeroth. Hello, welcome to the show. My name is Tarly, and with me, as always, I've got Big Voodoo. Or Doc, damn, Sleepy Gary. <laughs> Hi, and I got Britza, Big Ooh, Britza. I got it right. Oh Jesus, no, Big Britza Udu. Uh, <laughs> I like that. Awake Britza. Yes, well, Britza. We'll start with you. How how has your week been? Now that we are, you know, three years and one week into doing this show. As I feel like changed. that's calling for some sort of big announcement, um, <laughs> well, we which I have. have. <laughs> oh, uh, well, no, I I think like I can't remember if it happened before or after Saturday's show last week, but uh, I got flying at last. Oh, uh, so congratulations! That, yeah, that that was that happened. That's the thing. Um, so. I remember you finally like, get to see the Broken Isles for how small they actually are. <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. Yeah, you kind of like go up there and you're like, actually, I, can, I can't I can believe it's taking us like six months to take over this island because it, it really isn't that big. But <laughs> I remember like months ago saying, oh, I don't know if I'm going to get flying because I don't think it's really that useful. And you can just, you know, it's easy enough just to run everywhere. Seriously, people like get flying like you need it. If anything, I just completely forgot that I could go around at 310% speed i mean it's so easy to get around that place now just drop into quest world quest and oh yeah it's great but um god i was gonna say especially like having a gathering profession on a druid with flight form is Mm -hmm. so easy (laughs) oh and i love Uh, it i i for some reason i i love that flying as a druid i don't know why i'm playing more of my druid at the moment because i'm playing catch up um but yeah i really am loving flight form and but some, some reason the server's a bit laggy so i go into flight form and it doesn't transform me, so my walking is just swimming through the air, uh, and it takes about a couple of minutes for it to catch up. So that's always a bit of a weird experience. So, but other, it's really just Legion for me. Um, so the other thing is, I talked about how I might be getting into the heavy raiding scene, and uh, yeah, me and my guild decided to to kick that adventure off by uh, having a stab at Mythic Emerald Nightmare, and I've never paid so much for repairs in one hour as I did then. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> it, it was painful. Um, I think it almost killed my enthusiasm. For, no, it didn't really. But it, it, it's, it's it's interesting to see, you know, how different it is. I, I'm, no, it's yeah. really obvious. But for me, I've never raided at that level before. And it is brutal. Like, really, really yeah. brutal. So we might try just some normal Tomb of Sargeras, get off. You know, I'll vibe on, and then we'll check out Emerald Nightmare. For, for the casual raiding team, uh, normal Tomb of Sargeras is a very good mm-hmm. uh, paced raid to feel like if you're like if you guys never raided before, or you're just getting into raiding, or you just don't you don't like have the time to put in as like heroic or mythic raiders. Then normal raiding at this point just feels super solid because progression still feels good. Um, mm-hmm. uh, which we'll, I'll talk about here in a minute about Bay Team. Um, but yeah, it, it's a it's a great place to go in for raiding. Yeah, and I I know I'm loving it, my guild's loving it, and yeah, yeah. just having a lot of fun in Legion, despite the fact 7.3 isn't here. I, I'm <laughs> amazed to say we can yeah. still say that 7.2.5 is keeping us busy. That's good. Gary, sleepy Gary, uh, how's your week been? What? <laughs> Wake um, up, Gary! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been pretty good. Um, I've been playing quite a bit of Heroes, and obviously a lot of WoW. Um I have four characters over 900. I pugged some normal Tomb of Sargeras and tanked through the first six bosses, I think. Yeah, six. Nope. Yes. (laughs) No. Five bosses. Five bosses (laughs) is the correct answer. Um, Which was pretty enjoyable. As we'll talk about later, our team's been progressing through normal pretty well so i went in there thinking oh this is gonna be cakewalk 
it dawns on me. It's Our team's actually pretty dang good at mechanics. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cuz it's definitely not cakewalk. <laughs> All right, and of course, I've been doing a lot of the same as Gary, been playing a little bit of Heroes. I love Diva. Finally got to play her in Heroes of the Storm. She is so much fun. Um lots and lots of wow. Um so yeah, Bay team, uh we got uh, eight out of nine this week, and we got killed Jaden to thirty percent. So I am nice. I am super proud of Bay Team's progression. Uh, we did a great job so far this week. I'm more than confident that we will actually kill Jaden <laughs> next week. Uh, then, but I wasn't satisfied with that. I had to hop on the monk, and I pugged kill Jaden, and I finally got my kill Jaden kill, and now oh, I wow. have Argus in the sky. I have Argus in the sky. It's wonderful. It, it, and it's everywhere. Everywhere you go, you see Argus, and it's huge. Like it's way bigger than I thought it was going to be. I mean, it's a planet in the sky, but yeah, it, you, it's awesome. I part of me wonders because that only exists in the Broken Isle, doesn't it? Do you think that should have applied to Eastern Kingdoms and Calum, the, all the other continents? Like you would still be able to see. Oh, you can. No, I mean, I was. Can you? I was in, oh, was I was in Orgrimmar. Yeah, I posted a picture oh. on my Twitter of uh, my monk in Orgrimmar staring up at Argus. I mean, yeah, it is worldwide. Good job, Liz. That's awesome. <laughs> it's very cool stuff there. Uh, also, A team, we managed to progress. Like, so we raid Saturdays and Sundays on our heroic team. We completed all of last week's progression tonight. Got all the or last night all the way through Sisters of the Moon heroic, and got some decent progression on. I always forget this boss's name. Host. Desolate host. Desolate host, yes. It's a strange name for a boss. So hopefully we'll yes. get that kill tonight. And continue progressing heroic. Um I'm trying to think, is there anything else I missed this week? Oh yeah. Played a lot of Overwatch, which we'll discuss here in uh in a moment. Not ranked, I presume. No, not even on the live <laughs> servers. <laughs> oh right, of course. Uh, yep. Makes yes. sense. Alright, well, without further ado, it's time for news of the week. News of the week. That's right. It's time for news of the week, and we're gonna get the biggest news of the week out of the way first. Doomfist was just dropped on us out of nowhere. This past was a Thursday. Yeah, I think it was. It, it just seemingly out of I nowhere. So. Blizzard's like, "Here it is. Here you go." And he's on the PTR, and it's like, "Whoa!" All right. So this hero is not like I imagined it at all. Gary actually called it from the beginning. You see, we're always right about everything. One of at least one of us is. Oh well, yeah. He's an assault character. He's and well, I'll just go in and get to talking about him. So I downloaded the PTR immediately and I've played a couple games as him and I think I've died accumulatively 3 times out of the wow. games I've played playing as Doomfist. He is going to be nerfed before he's released. I'll say that much, but Oh man, is he fun. He's he's really not good at long range. He's got to be kind of in the fight and he's encouraged to do so because when he's doing damage, he's gaining a shield. Um his attack, he doesn't have to reload. It's a, a, like a four charge burst shotgun and then once you've shot all four, they slowly charge back up and they just fire out of his hand, out of his knuckles. It looks kind of cool. Um his right click, his alternate fire is a charge, like literally just a falcon punch. Um, and he can charge almost 30 meters with one charge. Pretty ridiculous. Uh, and then if he hits somebody against an object, he pins them there for a second and it basically stuns them. He also has a, 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 a leap in slam where he knocks up anybody in a, like a conal area and he has an uppercut punch, which throws someone about 10 feet into the air. So this, this guy is, he's pretty disruptive of a player if he charges into a team fight. He's very weak. Uh, people like Soldier 76 or uh, Bastion, like any, basically any hit scan player would actually counter him very well. So he has to kind of be in and out, in and out, almost like Tracer style gameplay. Uh, and then his ultimate, which has led to many multi kills on my part, teamed up with Azaria. Um, he leaps into the air and then he can choose his landing destination and do AoE damage where he lands. It's, <laughs> it, it's very interesting and does a yeah, ton of damage. So this character, he definitely shakes up the meta a lot. I'll be interested to see where he plays once he is live, but a lot of fun. I'd highly recommend downloading the PTR. Payload fights think? are going to get really disgusting. 
Yeah. Like, I can just see, because yeah. it's going to get brutal, isn't it? Because those, those AoE abilities, how many has he mm. got? He's got Seismic Slam. You say the the short-range bursts attack? Yeah, his he, knuckles. he's got... Uh, well, his shotgun, yeah, it can hit AoE. That, that's just his fire. His ultimate, his charge can hit multiple people if you do it right. can also be used as a getaway, because mm. it can go very fast. His rising up cut presumably hits multiple people. No, it usually just hits the target directly in front. Oh, of him, right, sure. okay. Um, but then his, he's got his like conal area knockup that he also does. So, oh, one of my favorite combinations is to do the uppercut and then do the knockup because it's it's kind of like a second version of his ult because you're up in the air for a second and then you can look down at the area that you want to do your knockup and then just fly to the ground and hit that area. I mean. He's so mobile, way more mobile mm. than I expected. Like, kind of Winston meets Tracer style mobile. That's not a combination you want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Gary, I mean, you, I know you've played a lot of, you have played at least a lot of Overwatch in the past. What what do you think? Um, I really like his kit. Um, I really like that he seems like he could be a good counter to a lot of the heroes I find super annoying. <laughs> um and someone someone to lower the value of tanks like Reinhardt always feel good because whenever you have such a staple hero, having something to kind of disrupt that mm-hmm. hero it's always a good choice in my mind. Um so I know like his uh rocket punch yeah. directly through barriers, so you can hit that easy on Reinhardt, who's already going to be walking slow. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, r- hit him with a rising uppercut. The shield's not going to do much when he's, you know, 10 feet above the rest of the team. Um, yeah. And he's definitely a high skill cap hero as well, because he he is not going to be relying really on his, uh, like on his just base attack, because uh, it actually recharges really slowly. So you're not going to want to just expect to go in there and just be shooting everybody, like Reaper, for example. It doesn't work that way. You're, you're going to be solely... De- uh, dependent on doing the most damage with your abilities, which is really interesting as well. Kind of, so it, it's definitely gonna have a high skill ceiling. Yeah, I, I'm curious to see how like the competitive scene shakes up with it. Mm-hmm. I don't watch a whole lot of competitive heroes, but it'll be interesting to see like this year at BlizzCon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for example, I, I think like a Genji would be a good counter to him cuz I, I just don't think he'd be able to keep up with a Genji dashing all over the place and probably have a hard time hitting him with any of his abilities. Well, I don't know, even the uh, animated movie he got his backside handed to him. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But um I feel like Arissa would be a good tank to verse him as well. Maybe that's why she was made, you know, to fight Doomfist. Presumably, yeah. he, you said he's, he's, he's got strong mobility, so May, mm. for example, could probably do quite well. Yeah, um, if she can hit him. <laughs> I mean, If she can hit got, him, yeah. He's got more verticality, he, like almost the verticality of a Pharah. I mean, you just it, it's so strange, everything that he's adding to the game, it, it just changes everything. Because you wouldn't expect to hit, like, kill Pharah as May unless you're really good with your Icicle Lance, but... <laughs> um. They said how much health he gets... Have they outlined the stats or anything? Or have you just got the abilities? Or you you would have known playing him, sorry. Was he, mm-hmm. like, health-wise? Just, like, 250, I think. It's right around Tracer, or a little bit more okay. than Tracer. Like, he he's not very strong, but the fact you can get his health up to 300 uh, with the shield that he's pa- passively gaining as he's doing damage. I think mm-hmm. that's what you could get his health up to, is 300. It seems reasonable. Mm-hmm. So he can can be squishy. So you want to be in the you want to be in the fight, but you also don't want to stick around too long to be the only one in the fight. For example, like you're not a soldier, you're not reaper. Uh, you need, you kind of he's kind of a get in get out kind of character, which you wouldn't expect. But of course, he's not Terry Crews either. So I mean, I would expect Terry <laughs> Crews to just be in the moment, but <laughs> you know. What do you think Terry Crews is doing right now? Like. Crying. The cover's blown. <laughs> He's probably just crying. Like, give me the job. <laughs> <laughs> With these little action figures, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can we um, yeah. can we talk about the animated intro? Uh, I wanted to talk about what oh, you yeah, thought that about anime, that. Anime yeah, the, the anime yeah. intro, which uh, I think caught a lot of people off guard. I think we were expecting... An- he ripped CGI. Tracer out of time. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> He's like, Tracer doesn't exist anymore. I don't, I don't actually know what the repercussions of that uh, happening are. Well, um, that's interesting because that... I, I've just been looking through the um, the story on the, the main Overwatch website. If you look at his overview abilities and then his story, um, it says that that, that battle um, was actually how he was captured before he was released. So... The yeah. fact that the the heroes are fine now means that Tracer was presumably saved. So uh, there, there, there were no repercussions, apparently, of Tracer being ripped through time or Genji getting smashed into a car. So, oh, huh. all right. <laughs> well, Genji's the... like more machine than man anyway. Yeah. Tra- Winston probably has some kind of like time net that he can just shoot Tracer with at this point. He's probably used to that kind of thing. Like, oh, slow down. Have you seen Have the banana? Have you seen the redubbed? anime intro no. so someone has done a um to put terry cruz's lines into doom fist and uh it's something to watch i'll retweet it on the geeks Vazeroth channel but the the greatest thing is is that someone's just given genji lines and all he does is keep saying i need healing <laughs> again and again and again <laughs> i need healing <laughs> just get smashed into the car i need healing <laughs> <laughs> that's great i love what zeta said uh, so because tracer got officially put into anime like setting does that mean she can be waifu yes 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 tracer <laughs> is, is waifu yes. and it also means at some point we're gonna get the spa scene because every good anime needs a spa scene yes yes <laughs> Star- yeah. starring zarya uh, <laughs> um so yeah i i expect doomfist to come out probably not this week but the following week he'll probably have at least two weeks on the ptr um if not longer because i think he's gonna need to be tuned because yeah he's i mean i've gone on 25 player kill streaks with this guy and i'm never playing him before i mean he is so um so broken but he's so fun so it'll be interesting to see how they tone him down because it's, it's all in his abilities that make him so good now, out of curiosity, do you think he's actually broken, or do you think that no one knows how to deal with him yet? That's probably true, yeah. Um, the one time I died yeah. was to a Bastion, because, I mean, I, he's actually pretty weak, and a Bastion just, nope, you're you're done. I couldn't get away. Um, so once people learn to actually deal with him, you have several just people focus him. If he gets focused, he's screwed, but, like... It, if you're in the mo- and you're dancing around just not getting hit, yeah, you're not gonna be able to stop him. We'll see. All right. Maybe I'm just really finally have a hero I'm really good with, other than Mercy. So <laughs> that could also be a poss- possibility. Um, the other yeah. side too is uh, have they released any of his skins on the PTR? No, Do we they're know keeping any of those. They're keeping them a secret till they come out. There are no skins, no voice lines. All right. Um, so. What would a skin be for him? Because we don't really know that much. Cyborg. From, I'm just hoping it's Cyborg from, uh, not the Avengers, the the DC Avengers. Oh, uh, Teen Titans. Yes. Well. Or Justice League. Justice League, yeah. Grown up Cyborg. <laughs> well, that'd be an interesting skin, right? <laughs> I'd yeah. be good with it. Yeah. What, and like just, or, just his Doomfist, uh, his flesh or something? Just swap it around? Stuke off Doomfist. He's got, already got I'd the be fist. down with that. <laughs> I th- yeah, I think it'd be great. Um, but yeah, just uh, pay attention. Download the PTR if you want to, or wait for it. It will be out soon, and definitely check it out. And he's on the far left of the character select screen, so when you join a match and you're ready to just pick him before anybody else, that, that's where you'll find him. Um, all right, moving on. Uh, next bit of news, we're going to talk a little bit about some patch 7.3. Before we talk about patch 7.3 later, uh, Blizzard has confirmed changes to the Artifact Knowledge system in that it is being upgraded to Artifact Knowledge 50. And right now at 40, we are at a 5 million percent increase to our rate of Artifact Knowledge. At rank 50, it is going to be a 55 million percent increase. From so eleven base. times what we currently get. Yes, you're going to have concordance on an alt's weapon the second they hit one ten. I mean, it, it, it is going to be ridiculous. I mean, that puts an emissary cache at 176 million AP because <laughs> they're 16 million right now. Uh. So I've like barely touched some of my druid artifacts. So if I 
put don't worry just wait till patch 7.3 well that's it I, I feel like if i put 175 million into an untouched artifact would it just explode <laughs> um you will end up wasting quite a bit of it true yeah because it will cap. you'll you'll cap it out yeah um so maybe drop a couple tokens in it first to get them powered, and then you know when seven three hits, just drop one hundred and seventy six million in and call it good. <laughs> oh my god, that is nasty. Well, it's good. Yeah. It's good because we get to catch up. That's the that's brilliant, really, because people can work on specs they haven't touched yet. And you'll uh, be gaining like instead of just automatically gaining the fifty, you'll be gaining one artifact knowledge uh, per week on all characters. Wait, no, I read that wrong. All characters will start the artifact knowledge level 41. Or we'll just start with 41 when the patch goes out. That's interesting. So all your characters will have artifact knowledge 41 by default. Jesus. So what happens? So does that apply to new characters after 7.3? So you get to 110 and your artifact power is immediately boosted to 41? We'll see. There isn't going to be a whole lot more of this expansion after 7.3, which will... We will talk about in the uh, discussion, but I mean, I, artifact knowledge fifty. I mean, I, I think I don't think it's going to go further than that. I think that's the that'll be it for artifact progression this expansion. Right? I would think so. I kind of hope so. <laughs> I mean, it is just an endless carrot like on a stick, just like in, in front of our face, just forever. Like, don't get me wrong, I really like the idea of AP because it means I am always progressing my character just by playing the game. And that's fantastic. But I don't want them to unlock, like, oh, you know how you got this unpowered trait? Well, we're going to do it again. Um, Because I don't want to deal with that shit. It was the the first time. (laughs) Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to deal with it. Yeah. So please, no Blizzard. Just <laughs> this know. whole nether like crucible. Let's focus on that. I'm good yeah. with it. However, we're going to be upgrading our artifacts, whatever that means. Now yeah. I have twelve artifacts to work towards. So come on, Blizzard. <laughs> it seems like Blizzard's making a a big hint to people to say this is probably the point in the expansion where you start leveling up all your alts that you want for seven. Yeah, tell me about it. Yeah, well, it doesn't <laughs> apply to you as much, but like for me, who's only got two hundred tens and like six other level hundreds, I, I probably should be working on these now. Especially considering they're going to take out a lot of the grind for me by giving me huge amounts of artifact power for nothing, really. I know what I'm going to be doing for the next couple of weeks. Yep. Oh, we're all going to be doing for the next couple of weeks. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, playing Overwatch. Um. Let's see next bit of news. So, again, like th- this episode is about how we were right. Uh, you, you might as well just... I know we've probably even had an episode title like this, but just title it again. We were right. Again. Um, because, uh, well, we were kind of right. And at the same time, we were 100% wrong <laughs> about uh, what's coming with Hearthstone's next expansion. Uh, so it is Hearthstone, Knights of the Frozen Throne was officially announced, and we're not getting one Death Knight class deck. How many How many decks are in the game, currently? Nine. We're getting nine, nine Death Knight decks in the game. Everybody dies. Yes, it's... everyone dies. Yes. I think Rose uh, summed this up perfectly like a couple of minutes ago by saying this is what this is what WoW would look like if Tyrion hadn't saved us at ICC. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> Everyone's uh, a Death Knight now. No, they are introducing a new type of card in, into Hearthstone. Uh, what's it called? The Hero Card? Yeah? Yes. Yes, hero it's called the card. Hero Card. Uh, when this is played, it changes your hero and their hero ability. And in this expansion, which I actually think we'll probably see more of this going forward in future expansions, probably. It's a good idea. But for this expansion, it will turn your class hero into a Death Knight version of themselves. Um, and they get Death Knight abilities. It changes their ability completely. The the one that they showed for um, was for Death Knight Rexar. He gains five armor. He does two damage to all minions on the field. And then he gets his new 
ability, which I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. Build a beast. Oh, build a beast. Yes. <laughs> he gets to. How often does he get to do this? Does he only do it once or can he do it uh, every turn? Every it's, turn. It's... <laughs> he combines three different beast cards, like all of their stats, their health, their mana, their on their on use abilities, and just throws it on the field as an abomination of a card. It's nuts. Nuts, I tell you. It, I, I'm pretty sure the video said three, Zeta. I may be wrong. It, it's two. It's two? It's two. It's two. All right. Build Beast, though. It looks so fantastic. That is just so str- It's such a strange concept. But very. very also, I really hope when you use any of the Death Knight cards that they replace the Oops emote with Rip. Because <laughs> <laughs> it would just feel good. And then I can also rip. be him by spamming rip <laughs> to rip. my opponent. Rip. <laughs> rip. <laughs> That'd be great. Yes. Um, there's also going to be a mini adventure, uh, which will actually be free to play. But it's, uh, according to the developers, going to be the hardest adventure that they've ever released. And uh, by doing it, you get a free uh, random hero, a Death Knight hero card. And, and three free packs. And three Free three pa pa. Yes. Yes. Can confirm. <laughs> I'm just imitating your son right now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so you get this three eight free packs, mm-hmm. and you get a hero card for each one. So mm-hmm. is my math wrong in saying that? You no, no, no. You don't. You only get one, one hero card for the whole thing. Oh, sorry. I'm with you. That makes sense. That would be nuts <laughs> if you get eight. Yeah, them, well, and, and also they'd be <laughs> one short, so that's why I was a bit confused. But yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Um, and of course, if you pre-purchase fifty dollars worth of cards, you get a free card back. It looks really sweet. Yeah, and that's why I'm sure Gary has <laughs> already spent the fifty dollars. I haven't, though. I really want to. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so this will be coming out in August, um, and they will begin revealing more of the hero cards later this month. So pay attention as well to your uh, Battle.net launcher for your more news. Yeah, I think they stuff. said the 24th is when they're going to start spoiling more cards, and then the expansion release in August. So I'm guessing on the 24th of this month, we're going to start seeing a huge amount of cards coming out. Um, and pretty much, you know, daily, we'll be getting new cards for Hearthstone. So, I guess quickly, do we think this approach to, to having the heroes, to, you know, reform to transform this way, is that a cool way to shake up the game? Or, you know, is that a, oh, yeah. also like a one-trick pony? Do you think they could do it with other expansions, or is this just because it kind of fits with the lore a little bit? I, I don't necessarily see how they could do it at least in the same way with another expansion because it makes perfect sense for death knights um but i, I think hero cards will exist in mm-hmm. future expansions in different ways um, like you just flat out replace your hero with someone else not like a different yeah. version of them and you know they said well the hero cards are brand new hero cards aren't really new it's the same concept as uh Draxus for warlocks you know replace your hero Changes your hero power, um, stuff like this. But the hero cards look so much better than Jaraxxus. Hail Jaraxxus. Hail Jaraxxus. Wheelchair access. Wheelchair access. Yes. Um, yeah, and Zeta chimes in to say, uh, I see hero cards existing sort of in the vein of Planeswalker, Planeswalker cards in uh, Magic the Gathering. Eh. Yeah. That's that's a very similar comparison. I, I'd give it to you. Uh, on a good side note, but, yep. sorry, yeah, I was going to add, wasn't there an announcement for the festival in Hearthstone? Oh, the, uh, Fire, the Festi- Fire Festival? Fire Festival, Uh-oh. yeah. You get double gold rewards from completing Apologies, quests. everyone. I have lost so, uh, connection with you uh, Skype. Give me one to moment here. not buy cards with real we'll money. going again. Go do your quests in Hearthstone. You'll get, you know, gold. Can you do that for me? And then I get the cards? 
that seems like you're going to say yes. So we'll take that as a yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yay! I don't know what's going Three on. Three cards. For everyone. All listeners. Too. Hello. There we go. Where Hi. did you go? Skype crashed. Skype crashed. Skype crashed. <laughs> We're back. <laughs> I didn't even notice. <laughs> I, I think it was just Skype's way of uh oh there we go. Okay. Skype's being really wonky right now. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. It's, it's Blizzard trying to stop us announcing the next expansion. I know, I know, but we're gonna do it anyway. We're gonna move on. Uh it's time oh, to, actually oh, I don't know. Before that, so Blizzard said that they teased both of the next expansions for this year in that graphic. Yeah. There's no special runes on the second one or anything. No. However, there is just a big fat sack of gold that's been kind of cut open. Tinfoil hat time. What do you guys think it's going to be? The sack of gold? What, on the... On the... On outfit? the Hearthstone graphic. I have the... no idea. Oh, Right. I didn't know there was one. While well, I'm looking um, up, let's hear your theories, Sleepy Gary. I was really hoping one of you would have a great idea. The vault of Stormwind Bank. Where's this on the rune? And so the Zeta speculates where... pirates versus murlocs. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, what I'm kind of leaning towards is if this releases in August then about the time we start hearing about the last expansion should be about the time we start hearing about the new WoW expansion, right? What if they're both like high seas? Like, we're gonna go kill Naga and Hearthstone's yeah. like, we're also going to go kill Naga. <laughs> that, uh, yeah, actually. I, I, I could see the... Um... There's the the Hearthstone obviously being a bit more whimsical about it being just a high seas pirate adventure kind of thing. Yeah, but yeah, I think that's actually very fitting. And I, I guess I, I think it would be cool to have something with the Buccaneers because they're kind of like a they're a weird part of Warcraft history <laughs> in so much they're just a weird yeah. faction that you have to Is kill it... them to be friends with them. The mean streets of Booty Bay. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Confirmed. Confirmed. Yes, Booty Bay Babes. Confirmed. <laughs> Next Hearthstone expansion. All right. Without further ado, it's time for discussion of the week. <laughs> What's a drena anyhow? Can I drink it? Discussion of the week. That's right. It's time for discussion of the week. And I'm going to say right now, if you do not want to know how Legion ends, get out right now. Because we now have the answer to that question. We now know the conclusion to patch 7.3. And so on the conclusion to Legion, the expansion. The Hosen are the Void Lords. <laughs> what is it with you and Hosen, Britza? You wait, you wait. It will be all going on in the cosmos, and then we'll come back, and it will just be Hosen. Hosen everywhere. <laughs> Uh, all right, and it looks like uh, we've, we're already losing a member from Twitch chat they don't want to know. That's fair. <laughs> Goodbye, love. All right. Now it's time. I'm going to be to talk about the. It, it's time to talk about the end. The end is near. Um, so, I don't even know really where to, to begin here. Um, but I was right. In my theory that we are ending the Burning Crusade once and for all on Argus. So there is a lot, uh, basically all of this information that we're speculating on has come from data mined voice lines from the raid itself and the quest line surrounding the raid. If I were to read through all of it, that would be an episode in itself. Uh, so I'm going to try to summarize what happens here as best as I can. Um, but basically throughout the raid... Uh, we're pushing to find out that okay, Kill Jaden is alive again because um, uh, in this raid, in Antorus, is this machine that is what what makes the uh, Burning Legion infinite. And that's why we're raiding Antorus is to find this device to stop 
um, the Legion's plans. And while we're there, we discover that Sargeras himself is corrupting the Titans and trying to resurrect their full power, their full bodies, so he can have a new pantheon and the Burning Legion would be completely unstoppable. Sounds scary, right? Um, Sounds scary. Right? <laughs> 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 it, it sounds very Gary indeed, but Sargeras is going to be here, and here is like some... Uh, some voice lines from Kiljane to confirm. My people, I have called you here to share a revelation. For so long, we Eridar have been alone in the universe. universe. <laughs> the beacon, the bacon of our civilization, shining bright upon what we feared was an empty void. We need not endure this solitude any longer. The triumvirate, tri I don't know. Triumvirate. Triumvirate has received a visitor from another world. He offers us power unlike any we have ever known before. He has shown us the path to a new future in a partnership with our new ally. The light of the Eridar will shine bright across the cosmos. I ask you now to raise your voices in praise. Praise Star Jesus. So that's obviously like a cut probably a flashback to the moment Sargeras at least uh, recruited the Eridar uh, from the sound of that. And he does not say Star Jesus. He actually says uh, Sargeras. Uh, but in another bit of information, we find out what Sargeras is actually wanting in a conversation between Agrimar, uh, Sargeras' uh, right-hand lieutenant. Um, Agrimar says, uh, what is your bidding, master? And Sargeras continues, uh, the circle nears complete. So this is uh, this is current time. This is in the raid. Agrimar is in the raid, and he's talking to Sargeras. Agrimar says, uh, what is your bidding, master? Sargeras says, the circle nears completion. The, uh, the mortals must not disrupt the rebirth. Become the instrument of my wrath once again, Agrimar. End the incursion of the light. The hour of rebirth draws near. Are the souls prepared? Agrimar responds by saying, Our kin still resists the true, pa the true path, Master, but they will soon be broken. So it seems like we're following a very similar line of Ulduar here uh, with just corrupted titans, or it was keepers in Ulduar. Now it's actually the titans themselves uh, being broken and corrupted by Sargeras. Uh, one still eludes us. Her essence is needed to ensure the victory of my crusade. And Agrimar responds, the life bender will soon reveal herself. She will not escape me, master. Is, is Who is the life bender? Is it? That isn't Ysera, is it? I wouldn't think Ysera. I honestly, I would say Loon. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. She's a titan, right? Yes. Uh, Sargeras responding uh, to the end of this. Uh, when my new pantheon rises, no power in the universe will stand against the Legion. So obviously we have to stop this. Um, <laughs> uh, just something else that's funny here. Uh, there is new voice lines when you click on Illidan too many times. <laughs> um, he, yeah. he, he'll say things like, your persistence is hardly surprising. You are not prepared. You are not pre... What? Am I denying you something? Bah! You know nothing of true longing. So, click on Illidan a lot of times. You'll get, you'll get some funny voice lines. Um, and we were right. Alaria does uh, talk to hunters specifically about her bow. Yeah, she says she's taking it back at <laughs> some point. <laughs> so don't spend yeah. that artifact power, people, because uh, it's going nowhere. <laughs> um, so, let's see... Um, here we go. More voice lines from Agrimar. Mortals, I wasted millennia fighting to spare you from corruption until at last my eyes were open to the truth. You are the corruption. We will save the universe by wiping all memory from existence. Soon comes the awakening of my brother Argus. Together, our new pantheon will join the master in breaking your fetid world, but you will not live to see it. So we obviously have the motivation what's going on in this raid. Obviously, Argus is going to come to fruition. Um... Icy Veins actually put out a really good video showing all the boss models um, and all the new enemy models in the game, starting from smallest, and then they like go, like, and they have them all like standing next to each other. Argus is huge, one of the biggest raid bosses aside from like Deathwing that I've ever seen in the game. Um, so you, you see those pictures, like you think, oh, these look—they're probably like the size of the Zandalari troll or something, but no, no, they're they're huge. So. That's good. They're they're Titan. They're Titan constructs. They should be huge. Um, 
just jumping in, um, the life binder is A&R. Oh, A&R, right, okay. Magni references her later on. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, basically they free her, they free her soul, they keep her alive. Um, uh, basically as we're raiding Magni Bronzebeard, cause Magni's always there when it comes to the Titans for some reason, but he says, uh, the life binder, somehow she is the key to Sargeras's plan. We must find her soul. And I don't know how Illidan hops in and says, leave that to me. Um, and Illidan plays a major role at the end of this. Um, later on towards the end of the fight, when Argus dies, we have some words from him. Death, death and pain ended. All life ends. My torment ends. Is it over? Free, 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 free. End it all. Know the darkness, the merciful release. The master demands your due. Master, I go to claim your prize. No hope, just pain. Only pain. Poor Argus. He doesn't know a lot of English. He just says words and kind of babbling to himself. Um, but once we've reached... The heart of Antorus, the device that has created the Burning Legion. We have Prophet Valen here saying, uh, this may be the place in the universe, sacred to the, le- sacred to the Legion. Demons would pluck out their eyes sooner than gaze upon it. Other than says, uh, who could ever imagine such a sacrifice? The heart of Antorus lies before us, the power behind the Legion's infinite army. And Bronzebeard responds by saying, so much agony here, so many voices, it's nearly overwhelming. But I can feel Aranar urging us forward. And Valen says, at long last, the end is upon us. Press on, friends. That's as we're approaching deep into the heart. And I'm going to read this entire ending conversation here because this is what matters the most. Uh, So we've got Bronzebeard. Uh, The Titans can sever the connection, but not here. They need to bring the soul of Argus to their place of power, the seat of the Pantheon. I can't read his dialogue without going into that accent (laughs) because they write it. Um like that. Uh, Illidan responds with, our, vi- our victories mean nothing so long as Sargeras has the soul of Argus to fuel his infinite army. Azeroth remains in grave peril. The fact that the final act will harness the last of Argus's power to imprison Sargeras once and for all. Heroes, I can signal the Titans to begin. Once they start the ritual, there's no turning back. The tortured soul of Argus has been put to rest. It matters not. We have lost. Look at the skies. And that is very impending doom. I think literally at the end of the raid, Sargeras is going to start clawing his way through the skies. I mean, I hope so. That would be awesome. It really would be awesome. Prophet Valen responds, Sargeras will un- will soon undo all we have fought for. And the voice of Amon Thul the leader, the original Titan, the leader of the Pantheon, comes back and says, No, we will use the last glimmer of Argus's power to bind him here. The seat of the Pantheon shall become Sargeras' prison, and ours as well. Valen says, You condemn yourself to stop him. And Illidan responds, Our world must survive, no matter the cost. Amin Thul says, A sacrifice must be made. Return home, children of Azeroth. Protect the final Titan. Torellian is there in response. Prophet, what happened out there? And Villain, is the last line of all of this, Villain says, Illidan serves as the Dark Titan's jailer. His sacrifice has ended the Legion. At long last, the Burning Crusade is over. That was a lot of information I just dove through right there. Everyone dies. Everyone <laughs> dies. <laughs> so if I understand this correctly at the v- end of this we have one titan remaining which is Azeroth who's not, which is Azeroth mm-hmm. then we also have Illidan Khan <laughs> not um, dead though he is just forever serving on Argus as the jailer which is crazy in itself, because like we could talk about this this part of it for ages. But he's a, the interesting fact with Illidan is he has become a version of Maev, <laughs> um, which is an incredible plot development. That through all of this, Illidan has become the jailer to Sargeras, and you think about the connotations that had. That's what he was willing to do. I, 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 that's incredible, but 
Anyway, sorry, I'm interrupted. Actually, it's a very strange mirror, thinking about it. Mm. Like, so both Illidan and Sargeras corrupt themselves intentionally because they want to save their, in Sargeras' eyes, universe. Illidan is just, you know, the world. Mm -hmm. And then Maeve locks up Illidan for the corruption, even though he's just trying to do good things. Mm -hmm. Um, And Illidan locks up Sargeras, even though... In his eyes, he's just trying to do good things. Um, that's very odd, but I like it. it. Is. Yeah, so it's it, incredible. It, it really wraps up the story. If you read the Illidan novel, you'll know that uh, I can't. Azul, whatever her name is, that the um, I can't. What, what are those light beings called? I can't even remember Naru. what they're called. The Naru? Naru. Yeah, the Naru that you talk to in your your class hall. She's also in the book, and she tells you about how Illidan is this going, going to be this great warrior of light, and he's going to be the one to bring the end of the Burning Legion. And you're like, what, what, what does this mean? Now we know what that means. It, and, but really, the greater implication of all this, I was right! We are <laughs> ending the Burning Legion, once and for all. It's, it's done. It is over. GG. Yeah, uh, Zira. That's Zira. right, Zeta. Yes, yes. Um, but not, but at the same time, it's not necessarily over because they're not killing Sargeras. They're just locking him away so they could potentially revisit it if they run out of other ideas. But for the most part, yeah, we, the, the Burning Crusade is over. We have finally ended the Burning Legion. And what's coming next? Well, we also have somewhat of an idea of that as well. Um, so who all remembers Warcraft 3? The good old... Real time strategy and game and two. There, yes, two is um, the first time it makes an appearance. Yes, it's more prevalent in Warcraft Three, the home of Jaina Proudmoore and her father, uh, Kiltras, the island city state, basically on its own, kind of off by Tol Barad, um, obviously run by humans, but it is separate from Stormwind. It's its own little country, almost like Lord Run, but on an island. Well, it has started making an appearance. It actually started making an appearance at the beginning of Legion. Uh, if you recall, re- leveling through Azuna, uh, and you go through the part with the caves and the sea giants, they have Kiltras prisoners. Um, uh, some of the marines out there are wearing the green Kiltras tabards. Mm-hmm. Um, but now, uh, it has been data mined some leaked, what's been called leveling gear. That's what it's just been in the leak named as. And it is some cloth gear with a map imprinted on the side of it, and a, of a map that appears to be Kultras, with tentacles surrounding it. I, I don't know what, about you guys, but again, I think we were right! It is going to be... I, I, I just can't say it's going to be anything other than a South Seas, Naga, a Queen Ashara, Old God expansion. It would make the most sense, right? Like, this is why we've been going to this so often, is Mm -hmm. this makes logical sense to go to next. It's where Mm -hmm. Jaina would have gone. (laughs) That's where she would have gone. I I think, at least. Right. Uh, So there's Iliganoth, uh, the corrupted eye boss in uh, um, Emerald Nighthold. Night. Damn it. Snow. Emerald (laughs) Night. (laughs) Emerald Nightmare. Yes. Um, Emerald Nighthold? Oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> Emerald Nighthold Emerald of Sargeras. Emerald Tomb of Sargeras, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, he has a list of different voice lines, and one of them being, uh, we have corrupted our heart and she is ours, or something along those lines, something about corrupting her heart. Her, her heart was an empty crater, which we have filled. That That's what the line was. And... So that could be referring to a couple things. There were two big theories. Um, One of them being that it's uh, Azeroth. That that he's actually talking about Azeroth itself and corrupting the world soul. But I think he's actually talking about Jaina. I think uh, we're going to see Jaina corrupted by an old god in the next expansion. Just like Queen Ashara. That... (sighs) What if Jaina's a naga? Yes. What? 
<laughs> that could make a lot of sense. Like, Queen well, of not the, the Naga part, but the rest of this. Um, Jane is a dreadlord. No, <laughs> she's a servant of the old gods. Right. Get it right. But Your memes I... are outdated. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, what if Cult Ress is the raid? Like, are we, can we raid a human city this time instead of Ogremar? Yeah, that I would mean, be kind of fantastic. What if they've all been turned into a cult praising, uh, what's his name? Nizoth. Nizoth? Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, like, uh, this article we have kind of points out that the last time Colteras is really mentioned is during Cataclysm when everything goes to crap and their island that they're built on just kind of disappears. Um, and no one's sure where it actually ended up at. So, Jaina finds it, starts looking for a way to kind of rebuild and destroy the Horde, because obviously she wants to do that, and the power she finds is an old god. <laughs> yeah. Also, wouldn't make her storyline mirror Arthas's, which would be kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Especially with how involved those two were. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I could see her also killing the blue dragon aspect, uh, Kel. Um, oh, yeah. Because they are, they, they have a love interest. Um, at least they did before she went bonkers. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there are also, I, I, and take this with a pinch of salt, because I'm basing this on what I've read through the NPC conversation lines, but um, a bit of context. Illyria goes through a bit of a corruption um, throughout the storyline, and I thought previously that these lines were referring to her, but maybe not. So, uh, um has an encounter, and when he uh, is attacked by Horde players, he talks about, um, he says, so, so she found me at last, she sent her underlings to finish the job. Tell me, when she seized your throne of hides and bone, was your allegiance forced? No, I'd wager you surrendered it willingly or were convinced you did. It matters not. You are blind to the darkness in your midst. Now, I think he's referring to Sylvanas there with the reference mm. uh, the throne of tides and bones for the, the Forsaken. Alternatively, uh, sorry, and so we know Sylvanas is going through a bit of a corruption stage at the moment. And, you know, the, the stuff with her is, I think, still unresolved at 7.3. It doesn't certainly doesn't seem to come out in... Mm the end of that so that could lead into the next expansion or expansion after but when he's attacked by alliance very says so your alliance still endures longer than i expected though she has already planted the seeds of its downfall she is patient that one when your thrones run red with betrayal when your holy places burn and the shattered masks hang above your hearth only then will you know and it will be too late it matters not you're blind to the, tr to the true darkness closing in around you i think Based on what we said, that could be Jaina. Because mm. she was quite happy to see the Alliance fall apart because she thought the Alliance had just given up on what it was trying to be by embracing the Horde and trying to save the Horde. So I think we could see a Sylvanas Jaina centerpiece for the next expansion as maybe both of them have their little mm. run ins, maybe with the old gods or, or otherwise. That would be kind of interesting too. It really would be. I mean, both of them are motivated by very similar means. They're the both, preservation yeah. of their own people. Mm -hmm. um, They're both very angry. <laughs> yeah. That would be interesting. And that would cover both the Throne of Tides and Bone, you said? Uh, uh, what's it say? The Throne of Hides and Bones. Oh, Hides. Oh, Hides and Bones. But, yeah, you know, that's just a reference to the Undercity so, and Lordaeron. Yeah. So... You know, it could still fit there, but I thought the the reference to the alliance. I thought that was Illyria, but Illyria is not really part of the alliance, so to speak. So and she she is not she is not evil in any way. What no. we've seen from her in patch seven point three, she's a warrior of light with mm -hmm. Terellian. So what happens with the whole void thing though? Because we did pull up that model. Last there are week. there are some voice lines. She uses the void intentionally. Um, I don't quite understand that concept. What's happening there? Let me pull it's that up kind here. of like I get the impression it's kind of like the shadow priest law. It's yeah. you know using shadows as part of the as a weapon for the light. If that makes sense, it's 
All right. It, there's not much going on there. And to be honest, it runs out after she goes through her transformation. I, there aren't any lines to suggest how it applies to the final yeah. encounters. So it could go anywhere. So that ended up just not being, uh, ended up not being important. Um, well, there's another, might, co- but we don't know no, yet. Yeah. Um, there are a couple other things too. I, I did, I was going to bring them up earlier, but I need to clarify. So last week we speculated heavily about, uh, what the rifts were. Um, the 7.3 riffs. Uh, they had Blizzard came out and quickly addressed it because the hype for them was getting way out of hand to what they actually are. They are cool, um, but they are just invasion points, just like we've already seen. Um, but we're literally using the in, uh, the Burning Legions invasion the way they get to planets, and we're going to seven different planets that we've never seen before and doing invasions there and then leaving. That's basically all they are. There's nothing really all that exciting about them. They're just new invasion points, and they a lot of different scenery. The, the scenery's been data mined, again, by uh, Wowhead, or by MMO Champion, rather, and you can see it on YouTube. You can see these zones. They look really cool, actually. There's, like, a big volcanic zone. There's a forest zone. Um, you just have to look up the rifts. But they, they, they are cool, but it, it, let's not get our hopes up. They're nothing too crazy that we haven't seen before. Um, and the other thing that uh i i okay all right i usually don't do this but i was wrong about something l- the what? last time we last week but this is a good thing that i was wrong about so my initial thought when i viewed the um the new azeroth world uh in the background of argus was that um you know it, it's rotating we get to see the whole planet no we only the clouds on the vector map that make the 3D model of Azeroth move to make it to give it the appearance of the world spinning, but the world itself is not spinning. And Blizzard has even confirmed people's thoughts that yes, we can see Kalimdor and Eastern Kingdoms at the same time. Okay, so we have only seen one half of the world guaranteed. Yes. Then, so that is a good thing to be wrong about. That makes sense. I. Mm-hmm. I'd be surprised if they just called that one and said, that's it, that you can see all of Azeroth. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, Azeroth is definitely not flat. It is like half a planet if you go into the like WoW World Viewer and actually just fly the camera outside of the possible physical bounds of the map of Argus and then look at how they made it. It is literally just like half of a sphere in the background. But that's not how the planet actually is. It is a real planet with a other side that we have not seen. But yeah, uh, I, I I definitely, in conclusion, I think patch 7.3.5 will be the final tier of Legion. We are going to find out about the new expansion this year, and it will release no later than quarter three of next year. Putting that out there. All of that right now. Quarter three of next year? That's a, mm. that's a long way off, I guess. No, I guess that, I guess that could make sense. That's when that's when Legion came out was quarter three of last year. Hmm. Yeah. Sorry, I won't start the debate on when <laughs> the next expansion is coming out, but that's that's interesting because I guess there is the question now as to what this is. It once I, the conversation changes a lot. Once we know this is the final stopping point, suddenly mm-hmm. we're not all you know. Maybe you're not as keen to start maxing out your AP or collecting stuff it's more tidy up exercise so who knows maybe in a couple of weeks we'll start talking about when's it coming blizz well it all depends too on if they announce the expansion at gamescom or at blizzcon um Hmm. because blizzard will be at gamescom again this year Um, i don't see them announcing the next expansion before the argus patch has gone live um but they could they very well could but i still see i still think blizzcon's more likely of an announcement of a new expansion they could always do a teaser, couldn't they? They could always start mm. teasing the next expansion, like formally with a a very short cinematic. We're talking like 10, 15 seconds. But see, the, the more... Or even just like an animated thing like they did with the Doomfist reveal. Yeah. Even something in kind of like that art style, so it's not like full-fledged WoW yeah. cinematic. What well, would the... Um, would the announcement... Will we have felt like we've had enough time in Tomb of Sargeras come August 
that we're ready to know what the next expansion is because already knowing Argus kind of devalues the current patch because we all just want patch 7.3 now really badly. Um, so if we get the next expansion and we know what that is before we even have the next patch on our plate, does that? I feel like that would devalue the current content even more. But by the same merit, they're going to have to be putting the next expansion up on the PTR. Or on beta? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, beta for the next expansion is going to have to go up when 7.3.5 releases. If I still think we'll have a longer final patch than, um, or even a longer pre-patch, for example, or like patches leading up to the new expansion. But, uh, but even to do with the longer pre-patch, you, I mean, they're going to want to start testing right. right away. I feel like after, so, uh, I mean, pretty closely after BlizzCon, I think, is when beta will start. Toom just released, right? Mm -hmm. yes. And then we've got another full raid tier. Um, so 7.3 releases... Late August. Late August? Mm -hmm. um, sure. So... November is one seven three five. Mm-hmm. And we get Argus right. so raid. What was it? June. So what? When did Argus come, or Tomb come out? Um, three weeks ago. June twenty seventh. Yeah. It was June twenty seventh, yeah. wasn't it? Um. So uh, mid to late yeah, August. November. November would make. And then November. So, hey, you're going into Tomb. And here's the next expansion, or we're, you're going to go kill Argus, and here's the next expansion. Well, I mean, if they want to keep up with like yeah. their content timings that they've been planning, that That's would good. yeah make sense. Yeah, it really would. The only thing that would suck about it is that the new raid would probably just be coming out while we're at BlizzCon for a weekend, so we wouldn't be able to raid. Oh, boo -hoo oh, well. you. Oh, uh, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> What about all us people who didn't get tickets? We, raiding's right. the only thing we'll have. <laughs> we'll just bring our PCs with us. There you go. I like that. Well, the, the actual desktops, like wielding under one yes. arm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, the, that timing seems to work, though. And I could imagine it, if it's not announced already, announcement at BlizzCon with beta within weeks of BlizzCon starting. And I think, I think to throw my two cents in, they... They've done a really good job of sticking to their promise of saying, new patch comes out, here's the next thing. Mm -hmm. And I think the double-ended sword of that one is that if you have this constant stream of current content straight onto next content, so you can always see the next step ahead. Mm -hmm. If you suddenly turn that off and say, we're not going to tell you what's next for like a year, people, <laughs> that, that's yeah. when the, that's when people start hitting the unsubscribe button. Yeah. And Blizzard doesn't want that. So Blizzard's I think, not going to do that again. Yeah, I I think we're it won't be long. I think you could see something at BlizzCon because on another note, what are they going to announce at BlizzCon? Like, what new, have they got? New hero left and to... heroes, new hero and Overwatch, new card, yeah. new card thing for Hearthstone. Obviously, you, yeah, it's got to be got, a WoW expansion. I mean, it's got to be something thing. because otherwise, you're going to go to BlizzCon to hear something they push out on a Tuesday. Yeah. Every single other week of the month, it seems. So yeah. I, it, there's got to be something juicy there. And if it's not a new WoW expansion, then what what could it be? That's the, it, that's they're, Warcraft they're not, gonna, four. They're not <laughs> announcing the new game. I, I will. I, we we made the pizza bet already, didn't we? That they're not announcing the new game. At I have BlizzCon. no idea. I don't think it'll happen. But man, am I hopeful? Like <laughs> I want a new RTS, and yeah, give it to me, Blizzard. Give me my RTS. All right. Well, we've been on this discussion for long enough. I mean, does anybody have any final closing remarks before we move on to Blizzard 20 question? What an end to August. Yeah, yeah what pretty an awesome. end. Um, now, remember, tune in to the end of the show. If you participated and you sent in an answer, because we have four correct answers, so we have to continue the quest for $60 of Blizzard credit. So stay tuned to the end of the show for you, so you can hear the next riddle. But otherwise... Boys, it is time for Blizzard Riddle Questions! <laughs> <laughs> it's time for Blizzard 20 Questions. And 
Yeah, without further ado, I have an answer. You guys have the questions. Is it Alcus? No. I didn't ask that. <laughs> uh, okay. Is this thing in Overwatch? No, it's not in Overwatch. Oh, okay. Was that question one? Yes. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, Twitch chat can help you out if they so feel like it, and it does not count towards a question. Hmm. Is it in World of Warcraft? Yes. Woohoo. Hmm. Go on, sleepy Gary. You're looking remarkably awake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really not, I promise you. Um, <laughs> is this a character? Yes. Is this a character we have spoken about on this show? I'm... Oh, like on this episode? On this particular episode, sorry. Yeah. No. Okay. Uh, is this character from before Cataclysm? Or were they in the game, sorry, before Cataclysm? No. Did we meet them or encounter no. them before? Okay. Sorry, Gary, I'm steaming ahead with the questions. That's... Fine. Weeks of prep have made me a pro at this. See, I mean, there, there is some ambiguity. I don't know. There... <laughs> Here comes the, you're going to hate me. <laughs> you're going to hate me because there is. I don't know. I mean, because no and yes at the same time for the last answer. I don't know how to answer it. So I'll just stay with no. Not before Kata. Now I'm thinking about what the ambiguity could be, but fair enough. Um, <laughs> do we meet this character in Legion? No. So it's either Kata, Pandaria, or Drenel. Um, choose one, Gary. <laughs> one of these does not belong here. Did we meet this character during Pan the Land expansion? Yes, yes we did. Ooh. It's only one of 50 billion Pandaren. Is this character in Heroes of the Storm? <laughs> yes. Ooh. Did this character appear in Warcraft 3? Yes. <laughs> is this character Chen Stormstone? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Good I think that's a record. Gary. That, <laughs> pretty, yeah, good job, guys. Got that very quickly. Uh, <laughs> once you asked the heroes of the storm question, I knew it was gone. Um, but yeah, all right. I thought that's where the ambiguity was. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, they're in Warcraft three, but you don't meet them technically prior to that in World of Warcraft. So true. Uh, that was a good one. All right. So for those of you who have tuned in, we have four winners of the uh, previously asked riddle. We have. Zeta, yeah, you got it right. Um, I'm trying to, ah, I gotta go back to Twitter. Where were you? I forgot your name. Britza. No. <laughs> Sa <laughs> Sadie Sticks. Sadie Sticks. Sadie Sticks. At the Mermaid Sticks. You also had it correct. Kale and Brady. You also have the correct answer. So we have to do another riddle. This one is the lightning round. Whoever can submit a screenshot the fastest with the correct answer will win. Oh, Jesus. And no, never mind. I don't like that because we released the show live and then <laughs> yeah. the podcast one separately. So if you listen to the show, you'd be at a major disadvantage. But we're just going to keep whittling it down until someone wins $60. Um, <laughs> or should we just raffle it? Let's just raffle it. Anyone who gets this one right by Wednesday... I don't know. You choose, Tali. Choose day. By Thursday. End of by, Thursday. By the, if, submit your answer by the end of July 13th. And then we will raffle it off to a lucky winner. Uh, you'll be given number one, two, three, or four based on the quickness that you answer. And then we'll do a roll. We'll just roll in World of Warcraft. One to four. 
The winner will get the $60. I like it. There you go. Here's the riddle. In a moment. <laughs> Where'd it go? Oh, no. Oh, no. Here we go. It's above 20 I found, questions. I found above it. 20 I, questions. I, I lost, We've I lost, lost our the, riddle. I had lost the window that had the show notes in it. Here we go. <clears throat> in the jungle of trees and vines, the smell of poison is quite divine. Scary tigers and voodoo masks. We hope you don't forget your flasks. Be sure that they don't corrupt your blood, or you'll be buried in the mud. Where is this location? Submit your answer to at Geeks of Azeroth on Twitter or Geeks of Azeroth EG at gmail.com. Screenshot of the location. Oh, and pr- the answer to the, fo- the pass riddle was the Throne of Thunder. Uh, that one was pretty easy, I think. This one's kind of easy as well. But we'll see who we can whittle it down to. Um, thank you, everybody, for listening. As always, you can check us out on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, and Twitch. And as I said on Twitter, at Geeks of Azeroth. And you can find me personally at Tarly underscore pause. Uh, Britta, where can we find you? You can find me at Britta underscore EG. And Gary. At Epic Geeks Gary. All right. And, of course, you can always contact the show with your questions. Fan mail, hate mail, love letters. We love to read all of that. Send it all to Geeks of Azeroth, eg at gmail.com. And remember to check out www.epicgeeks.co.uk. Otherwise, we'll see you same time, same place next week. Everyone have a great week in Azeroth. This podcast is part of the Epic Geeks Network. To find out more about our other gaming podcasts, head to epicgeeks.co.uk.